everybody, Captain Murphy here from PiratesAhoy.net. Today we're taking a look at the Suimoto Water System. This is an item available on the Asset Store for Unity. And as of Unity 5 Beta 20, they fixed a glaringly uh, painful bug with transparency. And it was actually visible in some of my previous videos showing the Unity 5 system, where you couldn't really tell that it was water. It looked like uh, rolling mud. Uh, and that's kind of an issue that was something that has been broken in Unity since I believe beta 14 is when they broke it, or maybe beta 12. It was it was a while ago they broke all the transparency, and uh, ever since then it's just been kind of a waiting game until they fixed it. It's been on the bug list. So now that we're on beta 20, and they were very happy about showing us that they did fix this bug, uh, I'm going to show off the Suimono system, and uh, this is probably one of the more advanced water systems out there. Probably, I wouldn't say the most, but as far as I've seen for its price range, it's definitely the most valuable. So for the price we paid, it probably saved us maybe a thousand hours of programming time, uh, problems, issues, bug fixes, feature requests, all that. It's saving us a lot of time. There's a few things that need to be added to it, and because the project is not just a plug-in, it's actually just the code. We may be able to add them ourselves and, you know, help the developer out since it's going to save us so much time in the long run. But I just kind of wanted to show you the flexibility of the system. Right now we're on a preset that I've created for just kind of our own usage. Uh, presets are just sets of the parameters you use for the object. So you can use a Suimono object. You can have multiple on your level. You could have small lakes. You could have... Uh, lava flows, rivers, pretty much anything you want, as well as having an unlimited ocean stretching off into the horizon. This system is a tessellated DirectX 11 capable, so all these fancy waves are actually tessellation. Uh, so as you get closer, you can see some of the tessellation changes. But it's actually a tessellated wave, which is very neat to uh, watch in the actual inspector to watch those things changing. Uh, so we're going to look at this. Uh, you can see that we've got some height changing, where you can see where as the water gets taller, it does a little coloration difference. And then if you can get light between um, yourself and the water, it actually does kind of a, um, a subsurface scattering. And you can make it uh, looks like very close to what was in CryEngine uh, towards the end there. It's very neat. And uh, we've, I've had great luck with capturing some screenshots that just look fantastic. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to run through some of the presets and just show some of the flexibility that is in the system. And uh, we're going to start with the clear blue ocean. And you can see how the reflective nature of the water changes. Uh, and you can see how some of the motion changes. Here is a dark blue, a dark deep ocean or deep dark ocean. There's ocean with shoreline. Typically there would be a shoreline along this edge where the water actually gets a depth map that's taken overhead. So as you move around, it would take a snapshot of the depth nearby and then apply that to the water. So shallower water would change color, change transparency and all that. It's something that we've really wanted in our system since day one. It just has been nearly impossible to accomplish in the system that we had written. So with the Suimono system, uh, we originally got it because we wanted to just get an idea how in the world they're doing that. And as a side effect, it just turns out that it's going to save us a ton of time just moving to the system instead of uh, trying to rewrite our own with these features. All right, so this is uh, Caribbean Blue. And this one again would normally be near the shoreline. You would see different transparency. You would see a different coloration. Uh, hopefully I can get that working shortly to show that off. Uh, or at least if the developer releases a version, we can show it off. This one is Dark Ocean. And now Simon is not restricted just to water. You can actually do pretty much any liquid. So you can have lava pools. You can have a spa pool. And you can see the real-time reflection. You can see the clouds actually moving through. The sky boss is reflecting. A demo lava flow, you can see how it's actually moving along there. Uh, and a demo river flow. This would typically be done to a small mesh, not to this large one, so it would be scaled a little bit differently. And then it goes back to the one that we were originally using. And you can do it on uh, static objects, or you can just apply it to a mesh and the mesh can move, etc. It's, it's very neat. 
Now built into the system is the ability to have underwater effects. So you'll see as I move near here, you can see some caustics appearing. So I'm looking down and you can see the caustic uh, reflections or refraction showing up on the bottom. If I go underwater, you'll see them a little better. So you got this really nice little caustic effect showing up. And you can see the broken camera fustrum problem here. That's, again, something that I'm working out. And it's, it may be rated a beta 20, who knows. And you can see that um, as we look up at things, that we're seeing that refraction going upwards through the object, not just only down through the water. So um, if you compare this to some of my snapshots I'd taken using CryEngine, this is not far off from uh, what CryEngine does on there. So it's, it's looking pretty good. Now the buoyancy script is having to get rewritten because of the way that Suimono does its height calculations. So as of right now, uh, buoyancy is just completely broken. But it won't be too long, and I'll have that uh, hopefully ironed out. So anyway, uh, so yeah, so this is coming along really well, and hopefully we'll have a test version for our internal testers to play with and look at. And you can see that uh, the Relief Terrain Pack is now working very nice with the Beta 20. So everything's starting to come along. Uh, Relief Terrain Shaders released a update for I believe it's version 3.2 so if you're using that in your projects you can go ahead and grab that update and it works so much better in Unity 5 uh, and then hopefully next video I will cover our new first person controller and kind of get into that so hope you guys enjoyed it remember to go to heartsofoakgame.com to stay up to date and to go to piratesahoy.net to volunteer your time